Hey folks, Cadillac Doctor again. We're back with our uh, 2008 Cadillac DTS. We're changing the starter today. I've already taken the intake manifold off. It's a lot easier than what some might make it seem like. Uh, there's a lot of controversy of whether or not this is a uh, an unattainable job. It can be done in your driveway with very very basic tools apart from the fuel line release tool it's not particularly hard to get to especially once you get the fuel rail and the intake manifold off it's right there no need to jack up the car no need to crawl underneath or anything like that disconnect the negative battery terminal from under the back seat uh, just just to be clear remove the back seat or at least pull it up Disconnect the negative battery cable from the battery directly. And uh, you can go ahead and, uh, and start the job. So the engine sight shield is usually in the way. Just over in this area is where the fuel, the fuel line connects, the fuel pressure line for the fuel rail. Disconnect each one of the injector, injector connectors, which are these guys here. Um, and of course there, there would be another one around along the front here. I'm just trying to get a wide enough shot here. Sorry guys. So this kind of runs along the front for the front injectors or otherwise known as the left injectors. Um, when we make reference to, uh, left and right banks on an engine, we make reference to the face of the engine, which is here. And we look at it from the rear perspective. So this is the left bank, that is the right bank. Anyway, so there are two nuts that need to come off. That is the main power directly from the battery. Underneath there, you can't really see it, it's pretty dark, but there's an eight millimeter nut and that is the connection that triggers the starter when you turn the key forward. So we're going to go ahead and change this out and put this back together. Okay, so we've got our uh, our nuts removed from there and from the trigger. The bolts that attach the starter to the vehicle are there and there. I've already taken the, the time to take the first one out. Um, it's a little bit tedious to do with one hand. I, uh, I don't have a tripod for my camera here, so... Let's wind. These are 10, 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, everything on this engine is metric. So, you know, like, don't try to slam a 3 8 or anything like that on there. Okay, that looks good. So take that. Oh, a couple more threads. Just gonna put my fingers. There. So now we can just slide it right on out. So we've got the starter out here. Uh, I'm going to try to give you the best lighting that I can. You can see the flywheel. And what you want to do is take a, a, a light and inspect the teeth of the flywheel. If it looks like kind of half of the teeth are, or the, when I say half of the teeth, I don't mean uh, quantity wise, but if like the, fir the, the leading edge of the tooth, of, the, of each tooth is kind of worn down a little bit, uh, and and or if you are re replacing the starter because of a starter grinding issue it may be time to replace the flywheel as well that is a far more complicated job I do not recommend doing it in your driveway unless you have a hoist and uh, and proper engine securement fixtures but uh, these one look these ones look pretty good so uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tape our take our shop vac and you know like over the course of time little pieces of wire loom and stuff have cracked off and fallen down in the valley here I'll just uh, move out a little bit so we can see everything 
Um, another thing that I neglected to mention before is you want to be sure that nothing gets down in each of those intake ports on the cylinder heads. Uh, if you're going to if you're going to clean up the area before you put it all back together, just be sure that none of the dirt or grime or anything falls down in there. You want to keep those completely clean, as absolutely clean as you can. Um, also, what I didn't mention before is with the intake in place, and uh, if you if you think that your starter is kind of on its on its way out, right down here is a little tiny bit of access where you can take a 3 8 extension, ratchet extension, and uh, have someone hold the key in the forward position if you can't get the, the starter to, to actuate. First things first, make sure your security light's not on because your starter may not be the issue if that's the case. Um, actually, it won't be the issue if that's the case. But uh, if your car won't crank over, um, you want to uh, get someone to turn the key and hold it into the start position and just get 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 down in there and give it a few little pokes like a you know kind of hit the top of the starter with that um, with that extension you can see where I've been doing it a little bit you a few marks right there all right we've got the new starter installed both of the electrical electrical connections are secured. Um, they don't need to be, oh my goodness, break your arm tight. They just need to be snug and secure. And this positive guy needs to have a little bit of clearance. It's hard to show you, but there needs to be a little bit of clearance. You don't want him touching the touching the cylinder head. Um, that'll cause a dead short and uh, cause a whole bunch of problems, including the possibility of making the battery explode when, once you connect it. Uh, it's really, really bad. Uh, if you get a really super big spark when you go to connect the battery, disconnect it right away because uh, there's a pretty good possibility that you've done something wrong. Um, and one of those things would be allowing that positive cable there to touch a ground somewhere, like touch the body of the starter or uh, more importantly, touching the cylinder head there. Um, over here on the bench, uh, I'm kind of glad this happened because I, I did want to show you guys that uh, I'm kind of glad it happened to me that once once in a while you get uh, a fuel injector o-ring that pops out so I've got this fuel rail sitting upside down so we'll just pick that out of there with a pick or a scribe uh, I tend to use picks because they're not quite as as um, as sharp as a scribe. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Maybe not. Uh, oh, there we go. And uh, just give it a, a quick little look over, make sure there aren't any, aren't any cuts in it. And uh, once again, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, a tripod for the camera, so it's, uh, it's kind of hard to do this at the same time. But you just basically just press that from one side. I see if I can show you what I'm doing at the same time. You just kind of work it around and then over the top and you'll end it end up like that. Um, after that, you put a little bit of silicone uh, lubricant uh, or brake lube as I like to call it, just around the, the o-ring and then you can push it back into the fuel rail. It'll snap in with this metal snap in place, this clip. Before you put the fuel rail back in the vehicle, put a little bit of, uh, of silicone lubricant around each of the O-rings that go on the downside, the ones that actually uh, contact the intake manifold so that uh, they slide in easily. You don't want them to get bound up uh, that's what uh, potentially causes intake leaks and uh, intake leaks lead to drivability issues and fuel economy concerns and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and do that and prepare the, the fuel rail for installation. So I did also want to mention that you, it's not possible to get too carried away with how much silicone you use. Uh, even if you get some on the on the tips and the uh, on the nozzles of the injectors there, 
Silicone lubricant is fuel sol soluble. So basically it'll literally dissolve it as it starts fire firing the injectors. Don't need to worry about, you can get as generous as you want. You could put a big gob of it. It's only gonna misfire a couple of times and it'll clear right up. So uh, you can be as generous as you want putting the silicone lubricant on these O-rings. Sorry guys, I'm having some focus issues there. Ah, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead back over to the car here and install the intake manifold. Um, uh, I wasn't going to mention it, but I did, as you can see, I've, I've cleaned up the, uh, the top of the head surfaces there. Again, make absolutely certain that nothing falls down into those intake ports on the head. That's very important. Um, so what we're looking at right now, uh, zoom in a little bit, is the in, basically the inside of the throttle body chamber as it flows towards the, the, uh, the intake. Um, when I'm doing this job, I kind of take the opportunity to clean that up a little bit. I take a little, an old toothbrush or uh, I, I try not to use wire brushes in there because uh, fragments of metal inside the engine, you know, if, if you happen to get a lower quality brush that um, some of the strands fall out of, uh, you don't want anything to fall uh, fall out of your brush and then end up inside the combustion chambers of the engine that can be extremely damaging especially over a period of time so a little bit of air intake cleaner and a toothbrush will clean that right up and then we'll get to uh, installing the, the intake manifold and we'll be back in action now I've got the intake manifold sitting upside down here intentionally so I can show you guys uh, these green seals need to be let's see if i can get that to focus on there's a little bit of piece of fluff need to protrude above the surface so if you can't if you run your finger across there and it feels like the surface of the seal is below or at the surface of the intake go down to your local parts store uh get yourself ordered up uh, an intake seal kit they're not very much money you've got it off anyway um, typically these are reusable seals but of course these cars are getting a little bit older again this one is a 2008 with uh, just over 200,000 kilometers on it so um, you can kind of expect a little bit of wear and tear on gaskets and uh, you know things that are kind of collapsible like that um, Again, they're usually reusable. These ones are in fairly decent condition, uh, but if they are flattened out, do yourself a favor. Don't cause yourself any unnecessary grief or heartache just to uh, save a couple of bucks. Go ahead and get yourself a set of intake gasket uh, seals. Okay, I've stopped here just for a second to show you guys what's going on here and of course you want to remove this in the exact opposite manner um, the boot that pardon me the boot that goes onto the onto the throttle body area there between the throttle body and the intake needs to go on first so you kind of go down kind of towards the driver's side of the car and then while you are making sure that there are there's no um, connectors caught underneath the intake on that side it's a bit of a tight fit you'll uh, you'll probably fight with these surfaces rubbing against the cylinder head um, you you may and I, I say this very lightly you may consider um, using a rubber mallet to kind of knock it down into place don't get carried away. Don't use a, a metal hammer. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna break the intake. It is composite plastic. Um, there's a reason that it's composite plastic. Uh, for you uh, early North Star owners uh, with the metal intake, um, they they were kind of known to if there was any sort of little backfire up through the intake, they'd actually blow out the end the end of the intake. Uh, these ones have a little. You can't see it, but in the end here there's actually a little trap door to prevent that from happening um, but yeah you can you could use a light rubber mallet or a, a soft edge uh, dead blow hammer 
to get to knock that down into place. Again, the interference issues you're going to have are right there. And the same is true for getting it out. You'll need a, you'll probably need a, a pry bar. Again, don't get carried away with it. Um, you know, you're, you're not dealing with a piece of three quarter inch steel. You're dealing with a piece of plastic. So let's get this down into place. We'll get the hardware in it and then we'll go ahead and put in the fuel rail. One thing I forgot to mention in the last shot here, guys, um, when you put the intake manifold in, the back has to go in first with the front slightly tilted to the forward side of the car. So this end, so line up your, your throttle body boot. This end has to come slightly to the front because of the angle right here. And hopefully you can see it. And it's to get around that bolt down there for the steering pump. So anyway, we've got our intake manifold in place. Make sure your boot is, uh, I've got mine a little bit cockeyed here. We're gonna have to, I'm gonna need both hands to work with it. So I'll have to put the, the, the camera down. But uh, we'll get that all set up. Uh, don't forget to tighten the clamps on the boots, on the boot rather. And once the clamp is tightened, the clamps are tightened, then put in the, uh, the bolts that hold in the intake manifold. Now, um, same thing as before, those bolts do not get tightened down to holy crap. Those bolts are, they're, they're, you're securing a plastic element of the vehicle. It's composite plastic. It's not meant to be uh, crushed beyond oblivion. There's no need to be reefing on those very hard at all. Uh, I believe, just off the top of my head here, I'm pretty sure that the specification is 150 inch pounds. It's very, very light. Uh, basically wrist tight if you don't have a torque wrench handy. Uh, don't get crazy with those. Well, we're going to carry on. All right, we've got our fasteners in. They're all torqued down. Our clamps are tight. Uh, I didn't mention it before. When you put this boot on, it should be flush against this surface, not this surface. Uh, the boot is fairly flexible. And you do have to tighten both of those clamps. The other, uh, the other screw there is in the back. Um, and it will be able to slide around a little bit. Uh, one of the things before you put in your, your intake manifold bolts is you really want to make sure that the edge of the boot isn't caught either on, on either side and make sure, you know, it, it's kind of difficult, but you run your fingers down underneath and over the top and make sure that that boot isn't caught um, inside because you'll have a major vacuum leak. It'll idle like crap and your fuel economy will be absolutely atrocious. So we've got that on. Uh, over here, we've got uh, this vacuum line that comes from the uh, the rear valve cover or the right valve cover. Uh, that needs to stay up out of the way. It goes into a little clip right here That needs to stay up and out of the way until after you put the fuel rail on That actually goes over top of the fuel rail um, We talked about it before we've lubed up each of the o-rings with some silicone lubricant some silicone paste uh, Make sure it's clean sil silicone paste some people like to put a, a little bit of silicone paste in their um, in a little jar or something with a little, you know, like a little paintbrush, so because it, it makes it easier to lubricate brake brake calipers and stuff. Um, use some fresh out of a tube. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, dielectrics grease works well too. Uh, just uh, you, again, the lubricant is just so that you don't bind any of those O-rings on the way to putting in the fuel rail, each injector into its respective hole. Uh, when you go to put the fuel rail in, the end of the fuel rail where it gets fed comes in up, up over here and gets notched into that hole and then tightened down. 10 millimeter, uh, 10, 10 millimeter stud goes in there. Uh, don't tighten that until you're certain that all of the 
Fuel injectors are securely in their holes. Give the whole rail a little wiggle back and forth uh, as you're pushing down on it to make sure all of the injectors get seated properly into their holes. Again, you don't want to create a vacuum leak. Uh, you'll have engine lights on, poor idle quality, terrible fuel economy, etc. <clears throat> so again, don't tighten that down until you have the hardware that holds down the fuel rail all in place do that part last all right so we've got all our all our fasteners in place and torqued down uh, bring our the rest of our fuel rail um, our injector harness over here uh, these guys get pressed over the top of the posts that side doesn't have one um, Sorry, again, I'm trying to do this without a tripod, guys. Uh, don't forget this guy. Uh, I've, left, I've left him kind of just dangling down the back of the engine, but don't forget him because that is the, that's basically the starter trigger. The vehicle won't start if, that, if you forget that. Uh, so if you get it all back together and you realize that it won't crank, uh, double check that. That's also a good place to uh, check to make sure that you're getting power to that uh, starter trigger. Uh, you know, if you have someone turn the key forward and test for 12 volts right there with a test light, there's a pretty good chance that, uh, yes, indeed, your starter has uh, decided that uh, its life is at an end. So that has to be uh, done up. Uh, each of these, each of these um, injector connectors Put, you, sorry, I'm, I, I can't really get a good angle on this, guys. But this little green uh, tab here, that's called a connector position assurance clip. So when you go to push it down, push down on the wire side until you hear a click, and then push the little green guy down. Uh, if you do it backwards, it may not go all the way into place correctly. Obviously, we do all eight of them trying to work uh, fairly quickly here I don't want to uh, I don't want to seem very long-winded uh, although this job does take a little bit of time um, I probably don't recommend doing it outside in a windy or cold climate you will end up extremely unhappy uh, or uh, or even in a hot climate um, you know, especially if you have uh, breathing concerns or COPD or anything like that. You know, uh, I don't want to hear it, but any of my viewers uh, falling ill just because they, they took some of it, my advice and decided to work on their car. Uh, also, the I, I had to take this front connector off here, and that is that connects the... Oops. That connects the uh, the front uh, ignition coils, so you'll only have half an engine firing if you don't connect that. Make sure that is in place. Usually, that has a CPA on it as well, or a connector position assurance clip, just like the back one. Obviously, someone's already been into this one and they've misplaced it. So, uh, also, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you this too. So this is that that hose we were talking about before. It goes into the little clip there. And then goes over the little nipple there on the the rear valve cover. Now, hopefully, I can do this with one hand. Hopefully, sorry that I'm kind of fumbling, guys. I'm just uh, I'm actually looking at what I'm doing through the camera. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, we're all back together here on this side again don't forget to tighten this guy up that's what stops this uh, stops this fuel inlet from bobbling around I just kind of hooked the, the fuel supply up here uh, don't be confused the fuel supply goes underneath that cable not over it so this, this guy here, kind of the same thing, 
uh, with the um, the CPAs hook I'll just show you what that looks like you hook the bottom of it under the connector and then click it onto the top and that is to make absolutely certain that the fuel line cannot become disconnected um, I didn't ever stand back far enough to show you this but this right here is the line this is a this is a coolant line that goes all the way across the front of the engine um, I should have actually done that first and that was my mistake um, so this guy here and uh, uh, again, I, I've made a mistake here, so I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit, undo this, put this hose behind there in between the throttle body connector, and it kind of comes up through here. So I'm going to have to put you guys down just for a second to do that, and then I'll show you the finished product. Um, I thought that seeing as I have to take this apart and I, I only decided to do a video um, about this procedure uh, almost halfway through the job, I wanted to show you the tool. Um, this is the fuel line release tool. It basically goes around, uh, on this one it's the, it's the larger end. You basically put it around, you straddle it around the fuel line. Hold the connector down, pull the tool up. And again, I'm trying to do this with only one hand and you just pull up and it comes off like so. Uh, I recommend highly against using, um, oops, we've got a little bit of fuel leaking so I wanna put it back up out of the way. Uh, we don't want any thermal events later. Um, I highly recommend against using a pick uh, or a screwdriver to get that style of fuel line off. Um, your local parts store or tool store will have fuel disconnect tools uh, like that one and, the, and some that are similar to that one in order to get that off. Anyway, the, uh, the reason we did that in the first place is that guy goes in behind there. And again, that was my mistake. So we put them over the studs and oops and I remember now I'm starting to remember why I did that in the first place on this end it has to go under the power steering line and again sorry guys I'm trying to do this all the whole job with one hand because I need the other hand for the camera there we go So up on top of the fuel line, press down in behind on the stud there, on the stud there, looking good. So there are, well a person must remember what they've done with them, but there are a couple of clips that hold those down. They were under, on the bench under the uh, the old starter, which kind of explains why I couldn't find them. So they're just kind of one-way clips. Uh, to get them off, you probably need uh, a pair of side cutters or needle nose or um, some guys using a upholstery fork, and they just literally press down. You don't have to spend all the time screwing them down onto the stud. Um, I'll just show you this real quick before I put it on. They're curved in one direction and they have a little lip. The bubble side of the lip goes down, the sharp side of the lip goes up. So just straddle it against there, literally push down. Now your coolant line is in place, don't forget to put it back on this end, onto the reservoir. I happen to have um, a set of hose clamp pliers, which are incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, it, 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 you guys, if you do this on a regular basis or work on cars on a regular basis, do yourselves a favor. 
and go invest in a set of these. It's worth every penny. These ones are fairly old. They're getting a little bit worn out, but they're not very much money to uh, to invest in. Yeah, they grab those hose clamps so much better than uh, trying to deal with them with a set of pliers or needle nose. There's only one uh, other thing beyond our, our, our fuel uh, our fuel line that we have to reconnect again, of course. Uh, in the same manner, always put your uh, that uh, extra clip on there. Uh, we want to be safe when we're driving around or if you're doing this for somebody else while your customer's driving around. <clears throat> and there's one only one other piece of plumbing and that is this big squiggly guy right here. And this one connects at the front and after it goes under a few things here, right down there. And uh, I'm gonna need a couple of hands to do this, so we'll have to end the shot for now. But uh, in a second here, we'll start the car. All right, we're back. We've connected. Uh, I just wanna show, wanted to show you the, the uh, routing of that uh, vacuum line that I just connected. It kinda goes under a few things here. Um, I did actually forget to put this, this, this guy right here, this is a transmission breather. So you just, you know, kind of clip it up in there so that it, uh, it doesn't fall down. Again, I'm trying to do all this with one hand. Uh, the major, the main part is that it is secure and not dangling down, uh, under the car or, um, or interfering with any of the any of the other moving parts. So uh, I've already connected the battery, and we'll go ahead and start the engine. To see how our new starter works out. So if if your new starter uh, makes any strange noises, I'm, I want I want to. I want to uh, start this a couple of times just to make sure we're all good. Everything that seems excellent. Um, if your new starter makes strange noises, um, you, you can't shim these unfortunately, uh, just because of how they, generally they don't need shimming. Uh, if the new starter makes strange noises uh, or grinds, you may have a spot on the on the flex plate or the or some people call it a flywheel that is uh that's all the where the teeth are all chewed off so the only thing to do yet is obviously <laughs> remove our light and put the engine sight shield back on beyond that i'm the cadillac doctor see you next time